Hey guys, what's up? Um, girls back at it again. Welcome back to a new episode of the Artist Diaries. Um, so yes, I give you guys the latest and exclusive content on new music, entertainment, news, and inspirational quotes by me. So the Queen's back at it again. Now I've been wanting to do this episode. And she is one of my favorite artists, period. I grew up with her. I mean, she don't really get enough credit where it's due. But her music is timeless. And I will, as a fan, make sure to talk about her music, her career, her longevity, and her artistry. So let's get right into it. Because this artist has always been one of a kind. So the artist diaries... Featuring the one and only Anne-Marie. Anne-Marie. Um, she's pretty much in a lane of her own. And Anne-Marie pretty much like nowadays. She's still relevant. She does still make music. People are aware of who she is. People who really like grew up with her music. Um, Anne-Marie was really really like popular and hot at one point. I will touch on her music career and you know I will do my ranting as always because I think that Amory people they have tried to downplay Amory you know as an artist as an entertainer as an entertainer excuse me as like you know her her music you know speaks for itself and really when it comes to artists like her people try to like erase what she has done in music and then you know downplay like her success like she wasn't popping so let's get right into it now Amory she came out in the early 2000s that was when R&B was really booming it was really like popping you know I grew up with all like the latest hit records you know a lot of the R&B artists really flourished during that time and era that was the time of 106 and Park. That was the time of TRL. That was the time of Soul Train. Um, and in the early 2000s, R&B and pop and crossover mainstream radio, they really did care about the music. The music critics and mainstream radio and mainstream appeal. At that time, it was so many talented and diverse artists where people just appreciated the real music the authentic of music Anne Marie during that time she was one of them period because Anne Marie came out like I would say in 2002 um, she has put out you know a good amount of like studio albums um, and you know she really like I said as an artist I think that when we speak of female artists that changed the game in music, Amory did that. Capital letters, D-I-D. -I, I don't care what nobody says because when we look at Amory's music discography, when we look at her, you know, like catalog of albums, you know, we really do miss how R&B sounded. And R&B was at a time where different artists were able to experiment, be creative, have that innovation. And Anne-Marie's sound was so distinct. And it was very innovative. She had like the combination of that sultry, old school R&B flavor vibe with that modern twist. And she had like that crossover appeal as well with R&B, um, pop, neo soul, soul, everything. And see, for her, she really gained momentum as time went on with her career she really progressed through over the years of her music and pretty much her aesthetic too and she was very like you know when Amory came out she had like that down to earth swag bubbly personality I mean she really she has that natural beauty period you know looking at Amory like I said you know she is a gorgeous woman you know, she just had like that natural, authentic appeal. She didn't try so hard, you know. And at the time, you know, she let the music speak for itself. Because Amory, she is half black and Korean. So she is mixed, of mixed race. But the way, like, as a woman of color, Amory did break the barriers. Because really, women of color in music 
because you know unfortunately there was like misogynist too back then and then like there was this like stigma of like oh you had to look a certain way you know oh, you had to look like the standard appeal of like what a you know R&B artist is supposed to look like or what a pop artist is supposed to look like but Anne Marie she went against the grain you know she was able to the right people you know around her networking you know her music she really carved a lane in the sound period on her own terms and we heard like the rhythm and blues and the instrumentations and all of that um so let's get back down memory lane mini ripperton style so this video is going to be a long video i'm just like i said just building up like what i'm going to say in details my opinions my thoughts and my final um conclusions to this video so sit back relax and enjoy but yeah let's get back to Anne Marie pretty much was like neck and neck with her peers like I have to mention Aaliyah because unfortunately Aaliyah had passed away what in 2001 and then the year after Anne Marie she came out and pretty much she had her own distinct and new sound and then Beyonce you know she pretty much was working on her solo career and then Beyonce came out in 2003 with her solo debut album um gosh i know that the album i think i know the album was dangerous dangerously in love that album and then ashanti came out um who else even in the pop music too like britney spears christina aguilera we had christina million so it was a lot of like different variety of like you know female artists that they were able to coexist at one time Anne Marie was one of them, and I don't care what nobody says. People in whole trolls. I'm sorry, I'm calling the other word. My bad. Yeah, even them too. <laughs> There's gonna be some hating people, but trolls and haters and critics all try to be like, oh well, Anne Marie wasn't all that, but no, Anne Marie was all that. She really was. And so let's get to like her steel albums, and I'm gonna talk about her hit singles and her feature collaborations. Okay, so this is Anne Marie's first studio album All I Have that album came out in 2002 and the hit songs that came from that album they are Why Don't We Fall In Love and Talking To Me huh. Why Don't We Fall In Love debuted like in the summertime of 2002 and I don't remember as a little girl watching the visuals to Why Don't We Fall In Love and then that was when Anne Marie really took soar and took heights into her music career as a solo artist. Why Don't We Fall In Love pretty much was like everybody's favorite anthem, especially everybody's love anthem like that. You know, Anne Marie really touched that topic of like, hey, why don't we fall in love? I'm really digging you. We're building a relationship. I love being in love. And that, that record pretty much was like the way how... When you listen to the song and you listen to it and you hear from the moment like the um trumpet or the sound of like and then it's like that bass and the production was so whimsical and so magical and it gave you like goosebumps and chills and it's so rare for a kickoff first single to give you that like it takes you off it just knocks you off your feet and it's really one of those like singles that you want to know who this artist is in a good way and Anne Marie that single everybody was talking about that single I remember when I was little I was watching the visuals I was like who's this shit and she pretty much came swinging out the gate why don't we fall in love pretty much was like R&B, the radios were eating it up. You know, people were really playing the song in heavy rotation. And really, Anne Marie pretty much was on the rise. Then she came out with the second single, Talking To Me. And that was another big, huge hit, hit for her. You know, how Anne Marie was like singing on the track, talking, talking to me. It was like, Anne Marie pretty much had like that natural, you know, that edgy, that sassiness, that like sultry appeal. But it was really authentic you know she just came across as like this like kind of like this R&B siren and she really could sing Anne Marie had a nice voice um Anne Marie's voice 
Like, she pretty much can sing. She knew how to hit her notes. She wasn't a powerhouse singer, but she really built up, like, what she had. She had focus and really had to, like, train on her vocals. And she pretty much practiced on, like, where she would hit her notes and singing on the right key. And her voice has always been beautiful. She had, like, like a... She, Amory, I think Amory's voice is like that husky, vibrant, and it just, it's pretty much like, it gives you that thrill, that sense of like, oh, okay, you know, and she knows how to like, you know, she's comfortable with her voice, you know, and she has a lot of confidence in singing it, you know, and I think that what really stood out really was like her music, pretty much, because the production and the um, producer that she was uh, working with what's his name Rich Harrison I think that was the guy's name she was working with who really helped her craft the sound for her to really stand out uh, amongst her peers because the sound of like that R&B vibrant of like the trumpets and like you know different instru instrumentals and just just more of like a combination of different vibes and different like music and, and, and just being able to just go in for the kill and really people are really missing that in today's R&B and really because I don't really like today's R&B as much because it's so oversaturated with like the trap and R&B it I, I just don't feel like that groove I don't feel like the authenticness the productions nowadays are cheap and lazy um there's no like nostalgic it doesn't give you no like flavor it doesn't just it just does not give you like can you feel it in Michael Jackson you know voice it's just so it's dull it's bland it does not give you like that edge and doesn't give you like that mystique feeling when we compare well we can't compare but I can compare because like I said this is a different time in music and Amory came from a different time in music where you had to be talented you you couldn't just go by your looks you had to have talent and she had that gift you know, she can sing, she can write her um, records, produce, and all that good stuff. So, really, it's like, Amory pretty much was like, during her debut album, she pretty much was like one of the it girls of R&B that really was doing a damn thing. Um, so, yeah. And then, we're going to get to her sophomore album, Touch. Um, that album came out in 2005, and I think I was in middle school. And then, the first single that came out was um one thing that was another hit that's another hit record for Anne Marie in her catalog um in her music career featuring Eve collaboration Anne Marie pretty much she was on a roll again you know and like I said after like the few years in the time space and the time gap between her debut album um era of why don't we fall in love uh, up until her touch um sophomore album in the time gap in the time frame the space that she had to you know do more uh recordings writing process and getting really ready to you know start working on her next sophomore album until she finally got finished with the fi final product and then she put out Emery touch in 2005 and she released the kickoff single um one thing featuring eve this song right here is one of Amory's. I think this song is one of Amory's like best songs in my opinion, because that's another song in Amory's like music career and in her discography where the song really touched on like the production and the vibe of like that go go music, DC go go music, um, the instrumentation, loud, heavy bass, the bass, and it was so boastful and like very empowering and Amory pretty much was stepping it up she was taking it to another like level of like that edge that badass that rawness that rebel and what I loved about Amory she knew who she was as an artist it wasn't like she didn't know who she was as an artist she knew that she had a little bit of everything perfect word for Amory she's pretty much ex she experimented with her music and she's versatile and she's a chameleon in a good way because we can't really put Amory in one category when it comes to her music. Amory's music is a variety of different influences from R&B to pop to like neo soul to soul to just like that nostalgic like 
I would say old school 70s music mixed with like the 90s music and the 2000s music but the thing is Anne Marie pretty much knew what she had and she went for it and she pretty much she had it you know she was on top of her A game she was still working with Rich Harrison um, you know she was still working with him and like I said it was really a breath of fresh air that her music was so like soulful and very R&B-ish and edgy at the same time and Anne-Marie's sophomore album was like a huge success for her um, also it was like a lot of you know just it was like more like a very authentic edginess badass rawness sensuality and all that good stuff and Amory, she was like, I'm just taking the world by storm with this sophomore album. And I have that album as well in my CD collection, as long with the All I Have album. So I have pretty much all of Amory's albums in my CD collection. So um, she also released a second um, single, Touch. Um, I know that song, that song was a huge popular song too. And even featuring the collaboration. I know she did one solo by herself as a solo artist, Touch. And then she had released this the remix um featuring ti so that song touch was another hit banger for Anne Marie. it was more kind of like that sexy sensual it was kind of like that raw edginess and the production was very like kind of gave me a little bit like a little bit of like indian music and a mixture of like i would say r&b hip-hop and it had like that up-tempo fast beat music don't be afraid to touch dun, 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 dun. and also it did during that time too crunk and b the crunk era of crunk music was really popular at the time too so that record pretty much infused with like the crunk and r&b the crunk and b just like um that era of music was very popular so just like okay sierra sound when she tapped into like the crunk and r&b the crunk era of music and Usher and like um, Lil Jon and, and the East Side Boys and Monica because there was a lot of artists that really was like tapping to like the crunk sound of music and it really took soar it really like soared heights into the music landscape and everybody loved the crunk music because I remember my little black self was listening to like a whole bunch of crunk music everybody was snapping their fingers it was just a really fun time of music and it was like okay cool but Amory, she did a damn thing with her um sophomore album and so that album was really like pretty much like she really progressed her sound and music she you know she she grew you know she blossomed and she really like just took the reins and just pushed the envelope with her music so that was just great to see and then I'm going to start talking about my little rant so this is my honest opinions. I'm being blunt because I am an Amory fan. You have the right to agree and you have the right to disagree. It's all good. So let's get back into the nitty gritty. So then after the touch era, right? Amory, once again, she got back into the studio. And then a couple years later, she released her third album, Because I Love It, in 2007. Now this album right here is one of my favorite albums because this album pretty much is a perfect example of Amory not staying in one box and just experimenting with her music and also this album right here you hear a lot of like the 80s influences of R&B the 90s influences of R&B and Amory pretty much she really was like always to me one of the, the musical geniuses when it comes to like her sound and her production because and this is where I'm going to say this because people also think that other artists out of respect for you know like I said I'm not starting anything but hey it's all good I'll be prepared to be a super saint if I have to but it is what it is but other artists like I said you know they you know were inspired by Amory's sound let's just put it out there they were inspired by Amory's sound and then it kind of like affected Amory's career too in a way and you know she really was dealing with like having that momentum and having that creative freedom and then she was losing that after the success of the um 
touch album so the error pretty much after the touch error that was when for this album because i love it it was supposed to be released in the u.s but unfortunately because like i said management you know and like label issues you know trying to like fight for her like career you know trying to fight for her um artistic freedom as an artist so it was like okay she pretty much had to take you know matters into her own hands and promote the album as the best she could and i remember listening to this album and this album was released like in the uk so it was really popular over there and overseas and then like i said you know amory pretty much was like she has suffered like i said the the music business when it comes to like having their artistic freedom and just being able to stay consistent with her music i just think that really and i'm telling you i do rants about how the music business is really really rocky and treacherous and it's a shady business and especially if for artists that have that tremendous amount of the gift and they're really into their craft and they put in the work ethic and they do the right thing is in terms of like making sure that you know they know who they are as artists and not following the trends and setting trends Amory is a perfect example of she has always been that artist that set trends she never chased trends and I think that in her case it did damage you know it did affect her music career too because other you know artists they you know they kind of bit off her style a little bit you know they kind of you know just took it and ran with it but anyway everybody been saying it too so like I said and pretty much in my opinion I do agree because it's like it's you know people do they want Anne Marie to be like a bigger star for herself and I'm saying for herself and I'm very being very specific because I know I know once this video is done some people are gonna be in my mentions but it's all good I'm prepared be prepared like scar anyway in the Lion King I had to throw it out there and it's like Amory pretty much was just doing her thing in music and then when she dealt with like you know mismanagement and like creative differences and fighting for her art her music and all that crazy stuff that was going on in the music business Amory pretty much had to really like revamp her career pretty much she had to start over and then work with like you know other new producers and you know just get back to swing things creatively in her music so when we get to the fourth album um the fourth album Anne Marie in Love and War she came out with this album in 2009 I was in high school so I remember when Anne Marie came back with that album it was like pretty much it was a lot of excitement because it it was a while you know since she released her third album because I love it and then people were really excited for Anne Marie to you know still make music but like I said she had to like revamp she was signed onto um I think she was signed onto Def Jam I think it was Def Jam that she was signed to with this Love and War and Love in Love and War album and I think she also was working with LA Reid at the time too so really it's like you know to revamp her career you know for him like help her get her career right back on track and then um this album has a couple of songs um the first song why are you that's the lead song off the kickoff start of the album and this album pretty much to me is another album that's underrated in Anne Marie's catalog because you know Anne Marie was tapping to like R&B pop and rock and roll you know neo soul and a lot of like experimentation in her music um I also think that you know the why are you single it's pretty much like the you know it's it's the song is pretty much like, you know, why are you, you know, the relationship problems, the issues, and all that good stuff. And it was like, the way how Amory was trying to really stick to her signature sound. And even though she did progress as an artist, even though she was experimenting with her music, she really fought hard to really make sure that to keep her fans happy and also keep herself happy as an artist too, to stick to what she knew with her signature sound. 
because she already had a sound that was very distinct very unique and it was so like nostalgic and it had a lot of like that overall it was like a pot of gumbo so you couldn't really like i said you can't put her in the box but she really really lived up to like her signature sound and she did her best to stay consistent and then this other song i think after the oh yeah heard them all she released heard them heard them all featuring i think it was featuring fabulous yeah it was featuring fabulous and that was like the last single from the end love and war album and really this is where i'm telling you i'm going to say what i gotta say it's going i'm gonna get to my rant and my theories but it's my opinion and you have the right to like you have the right to not like it. You have the right to agree. And you have the right to disagree. Because, listen, I'm a fan. I have loved Anne Marie since day one. I've supported Anne Marie. And as far as that I grew up with, I'm aware of what was going on. So, anyway, in Love and War, that album pretty much was pretty much like the last studio album that Anne Marie had released as a um, solo artist. And then after that, you know, she took a break and a hiatus from the music business. And um, I know her collaborations that she released in between like the eras of like her debut album, her second album, and her third album. But in between, um, she did the features with the song featuring LL Cool J. Because that song Paradise was a huge, huge, like big hit record for her. Um, it was more like that island tropical R&B vibe, you know that sexy vibe, that sultry vibe, and then I know she put out this other collaboration after she was on Chingy's album. They did a collaboration together called Fly Like Me. That's another song that was like up tempo, a beat. You know, it was a really cool, sexy, like swagged up, swagged out uh song, the record. So Emery pretty much to me, she was already pretty much like that it girl. You know, period. You know, she was that it girl, like, just doing her thing, staying in her lane. And just like I said, she was no different from, like, the new R&B, you know, female artist doing her thing. And like I said, I don't hate. I don't throw shade. I'm just stating facts. And also, I'm stating my opinions and my rants, as always, as usual. So, I ain't nothing changed. And, yeah, so, it was like, for her... Emery have, has always been herself. She has always been that artist with like putting out quality music. And also, you know, she um, pretty much, like I said, she pretty much was on a roll. Now let's get to my rants. Alright, this is the good stuff. Now, some people, in Emery's case, they feel like Anne Marie should have been a bigger star. And I do agree. The reason why is that Anne Marie just had like that natural appeal and that star power. And she just really, she just possessed so much of that talent. What I'm being mean by that, Anne Marie can sing, she can write, she can produce, and she can dance. She can dance. You know, I mean, Anne Marie pretty much like the one thing video, she was dancing in that video. I mean, she was in heels dancing, you know, she was just having like fun with it. And she brought you a lot of like that high energy in her performances. And I think people, they kind of overlook Anne Marie as a whole entertainer as well because Anne Marie pretty much was like, dominating the R&B charts and I think that for her she was able to keep up with the times with her music but she also was Anne Marie she never was trying to like be no one but her but then ironically which is really funny because some people they have said that Anne Marie pretty much was like you know original and when it comes to like artists, you know, being, and I'm trying my best to just be very, 
I'm I'm just being respectful. I'm just saying it is what it is. But Anne Marie, people felt like Anne Marie, her style, her looks, her image, like she was being ripped off. Like, you know, she you know, she wasn't getting like the credit where that she deserved. Because when we listen to Amory's music, she was doing all of that like high energy dancing and all the you know, just the high energy like she just really was like in the lane of her own. She really was pretty much like Anne Marie. You know, and she's Anne Marie, she will always be Anne Marie. There's only one Anne Marie. I'm not comparing her to other female artists because I know some folk gonna be into their little feelings, but like I said, as out of respect. There's only one Anne Marie. I'm talking about Anne Marie as an artist. And as a fan, looking at Anne Marie's aesthetic, how she basically was just like the high. She just, she had a lot of like that poise. And she just, it's really crazy because just looking at Anne Marie, and people have said, well, Anne Marie pretty much didn't really have that star power because. You know, like I said, she started going downhill and all that, and then Emery really, she was all, she was all right, but she, she wasn't like that it girl. And I'm like, yeah, but everything that I summed up, she was that it girl. Period. Whether y'all like it or not, she had just really, pretty much like her career just took out the gate. It just, it's almost like she pretty much. She just built her own lane, and then she, when the right time, the execution to take her wings and soar, she did that. And I think it's really sad that some people tried to discredit her because they feel like they also have to put her down to uplift, you know, other artists. And even though Anne Marie wasn't like okay in the opinions of those who felt like Emery wasn't that big of a star globally but Emery pretty much you know she got hits under her belt Emery pretty much like is a household name you know she has been a household name I mean people know who she is outside of UK and in the US and I also think that it's really pathetic that some people just because they haven't supported an artist and just because they haven't followed an artist they always want to be biased and talk out their ass without just doing research and it's okay to like who you like and it's okay and I respect that but I don't want no disrespecting shit over here because I just feel like artists have room to grow to evolve to really adapt and there's room for talented artists period but my thing is with Anne Marie's talent, it spoke for itself, and the way her lane of music, she already was ahead of ahead of her time. She was on top of her game, you know. So it's like looking at her. She really, the way how her image, her marketing, her image was on point. You know, her marketing was fine. It's just that when it got to like, I'm telling you, trying to stay afloat in this music business which is toxic as hell she had to really make changes in her music career she had to really had to like fight for her music just like any artist that has you know that have went through difficulties trying to stay afloat trying to maintain their signature sound you know fighting with the record labels not seeing eye to eye it's the same thing it's no different but you know she really pretty much was like had, she just had like you know she just had it she had that it factor and regardless of what people say that they say well you know Anne Marie pretty much you know she's irrelevant now and she's a flop and all that but my thing is okay you can call her a flop and irrelevant but Anne Marie is still that chick you know she is still that chick and it's so sad that we use terms like flop and irrelevant just to prove a fucking point. I mean, hell, if you haven't been following a fucking artist and if you haven't been supporting artists, then you need to shut the fuck up. Your opinion, I mean, it's your opinion, but it's like, what are you talking about? If you haven't done research and if you haven't, like, really followed an artist's music career, but you're just going by what, like I said, going by what everybody else is saying instead of thinking for yourself, really, you know, you're losing out, you know? But I think that Anne Marie 
in her case defending Anne Marie and as an Anne Marie defending her as a fan I feel like Anne Marie had just pretty much she had suffered through like the climate of like making sure maintaining her sound and everything else but like I said when I look at Anne Marie you know she really was like on top you know of her game you know as a furious performer for herself you know she really could sing and dance and you know she just had like that natural like charisma you know she could put on a show you know and Anne Marie pretty much like studied the grace before her because she she pretty much like she just really took her music career seriously she wasn't no gimmick period because there's nothing gimmicky about Anne Marie period um the way how Anne Marie commanded the stage you know and even though when it comes to singing Anne Marie to me she wasn't a powerhouse singer like she wasn't like a powerhouse singer but I loved it, her voice she could sing I think that Anne Marie's voice when you hear her voice on the tracks in the production it's kind of like okay this is my opinion when I hear her voice it's like buttery to me you know she's not screeching so high but she knows how to hit her notes her harmonies and she's you know her sing it it does mesh well on the production on the tracks because with her she was able to like really you know get her point across and when it comes to singing on productions whether it's up tempo records whether it's mid tempo records whether it's low tempo records I think Amory the producers that she was working with and Rich Harrison I'm glad that they found music that matched her voice and suited well with her voice and that's a great thing that's a plus because if you create music that measures up to your singing abilities or your singing abilities no matter what kind of genre no matter what kind of style the music the production as long as the production is on point as long as it's very you know you can hear the sounds of music the different variety of music the instrumentation is not lacking the instrumentation is not lazy it's not cheap it's like that authentic and quality of the production you are you are on point period because what I'm hearing nowadays oh boy um it's either the production is off it's lacking or the singer is not really singing or there's auto tune or pretty much it's just a mess. It's a hot ass mess. It's a damn mess. And I don't even know what the hell. Especially with these damn mumble singers. Mumble rappers. I'm like really? But that's just a different story. And that's just a different video. So anyway. Getting back to Anne Marie. You know Anne Marie's music. Really measured up to her singing. And it measured up to like her artistic. You know. Creative freedom and her artistry. So her music has always been on point, in in my opinion. And, you know, people, when I'm, you know, reading the Twitter responses, you know, when her name is being mentioned, people's like, yo, you know, Amory's music was really good. You know, I hate that. Like I said, you know, she didn't get a lot of, like, recognition. She didn't get bigger than what she could have been. And it's true. I think Amory, she would have been a bigger artist for herself. You know, I think Amory pretty much, she was already gaining momentum anyway. But I love that Amory kept pushing through. She never gave up on herself. She never said she didn't sell her soul. You know, she wanted to just maintain her artistry and that's all that she wanted to do. And really now, like I said, I think that it's only fair that in Amory's case, you know, whether people are fans or not, I think Amory, in my opinion, She's pretty much one of the R&B artists that pretty much changed the game in R&B music. You know, because she just really had like that unique appeal. And as well as the rest of her peers. So, like I said, you know, I'm welcome to like the conversations and the dialogues below. And all of that above. Also, like I said, during her time off. Um, Amory, years from now, I think it was like after... In Love and War album that came out in 2009 um, she took a break she took a hiatus in music you know she was doing more like the creative side like writing books 
and later on you know she has a youtube channel too so shout out to Anne marie Anne marie if you see this video girl i'm a huge fan please subscribe to my video because i love you so much i'm a huge fan also congratulations on like your success your life your mother i'm so proud of you keep doing great things sis um so yeah so Anne marie basically throughout the years she still was like creating music i know she was creating like billy it's supposed to be like a mixtape EP in the Semantica trilogy. And then around a couple years ago, I think it was around 2015 or 2016, Anne Marie did come back with her um, EP Drive. And that freaking EP is amazing. Because that EP was like, Anne Marie came back just reminding people who tried to sh throw shade at her. Be like, well, Anne Marie wasn't all that. No, Anne Marie came back and everybody loved the drive. Um, the EP, like I said, is still maintaining Anne Marie's signature sound, you know, experimenting with her music. And really, Anne Marie really tapped a lot into her artistry once again for herself. And she was very, like, inspired hearing different sounds of today's music. But she still maintained, like, a flow when it comes to, like, her artistry. And I also think that the Drive EP pretty much really, you know, got her back on track with her music career. And I know she was like in between, you know, her personal life. She was doing other things as well. Um, then we already know about 4 a.m. Mulholland and after 4 a.m. EPs. And she had released those EPs, I would say, last year because I did a music review. So go check them out. So check them out. I did music reviews. Review. I did music reviews on both of them. And both of those albums are like masterpieces to me because Anne Marie really tapped back into her artistry and those sounds of more like that R&B, neo soul, funk, pop, you know, and just like that aesthetic of like the nostalgia, the nostalgia of the vibe that she have always brought to the table. So she really pretty much, she has always took another level with her music. You know, she, regardless people admit it or not, she always took a level above with her music. And really, Anne Marie, you know, I feel like her music, because I know other artists, they're influenced by her as well, you know. But out of respect, I can say out of fairness, like I said, everybody got a lane. But even for Anne Marie's defense in her case, Anne Marie was like pretty much, she's just pretty much ahead of her time. You know, her music pretty much is like, it's kind of like that chameleon like music with an edge and just that magic feel and that magic touch. But yeah, Anne Marie just, she really killed it. She really killed it with like those EPs. And I did a music review, so go check them out. So check out my music reviews of 4 a.m., 8 a.m., Mulholland, and after 4 a.m. And I'm going to wrap up this video with my final thoughts and conclusions. Now, as an Anne Marie fan, I would say that so far... Anne Marie has carved a lane in her music and as an artist of like that innovation, artistic and creative freedom. I think that Anne Marie pretty much like, you know, she did a damn thing in music. Now, what I'm saying is I want Anne Marie to continue making music. Um, because guys, we need some good ass music being played nowadays but i know today's current of music it is what it is the um trap and the r&b is hot for what it is but i also think still we can still you know listen to Anne marie we can still support Anne marie just because Anne marie is a well-seasoned artist i'm saying that out of respect because i'm not i'm not going there with that other shit what i'm saying is that Anne marie pretty much she came from the era of the early 2000s. So, like I said, that time era where she was popular, she gained momentum. She has achieved success. 
you know she has his singles under her belt and she is a household name and will forever be a household name period okay and I feel like you know I really want new Anne Marie music I really do it's boring as hell people it's boring as hell because I try to get into like the new music but I can't so I just go back into like my C collection and just listen to Anne Marie's music especially her music because really her music has always been good music um I also feel like you know um Anne Marie you know I love that as a person Anne Marie like I said I don't know the woman but she really like I said she's down to earth she's humble um I haven't heard anything like messed up about her like throughout in the press but I have to be honest she has kept herself like I said grounded and you know had to have her own personal life you know live her life and have a level headed and like you know have her sanity because I'm telling I'm telling y'all and I keep saying this these people are human beings we can support them we can love them but at the end of the day whatever they're going through we have to just support them and wish them well in positivity through the good times and through the bad times that's all I gotta say on that but to wrap things up I think Anne Marie she will always be one of a kind of music and I really want her to like keep making music and we need to get another new Anne Marie album period it's long overdue it's way overdue you know so Anne Marie if you see this video sis just shout out to you follow me subscribe to my channel because I need to subscribe to your YouTube channel so please subscribe to me I love your music I'm a long time fan since day one I grew with you ever since I was a little girl so now like I said um we're ready for new music the fans are ready for new music when you're ready for new music so all I gotta say is um yeah Anne Marie pretty much is Anne Marie. Anne Marie will always be the next Anne Marie. I think Anne Marie needs to get credit where it's due. She needs to get her flowers where it's due. You know, we need to appreciate our R&B artists that really like did a damn thing in music, regardless of the era they came for, from. And really, it's like in Anne Marie's case, I think that you know, as a fan, I explain everything to the best of my knowledge, my opinions. And for the fans too, of course, so Anne Marie fans, please feel free to check this video out, The Artist Diaries. And I summed everything up. So, um, anything that you guys would like to share, your thoughts, your opinions, your comments down below, please don't be afraid as always, because it's all love over here. And yeah, I go crazy sometimes. I'll turn into a Super Saiyan once in a while, but hey, it's all love. I'm passionate, so hell, it's my channel. But I think, like I said, you know, just looking back at Amory's music career and how she really pretty much was like one of the hottest like R&B artists like of her generation and one of like the it girls in R&B you know and I'm saying that in a good way I'm saying it as a good thing because she was and also R&B artists like her peers like Ashanti um Beyonce um who else um like I said I gotta I gotta throw out Aaliyah too and Aaliyah you already know how I feel about Aaliyah too, because you know I'm an Aaliyah fan for real, for real too. But um, you know, just like her peers, and really, just looking at how R&B pretty much was changing, and it was progressing, you know, and there was just a new sound that was getting ready to like emerge, you know, on, you know, in the mainstream, on mainstream radio, and even when that sound wasn't on mainstream radio yet it was really being created during the underground you know behind the scenes so my thing is artists like Anne Marie that had the opportunity to get with the right people and network the right way and you know in the early stages of, stages of her career she was able to like you know take flight and soar and like I said just like um, every other artist people go through things you know their challenge you know there are challenges for real and like I said in the music business you gotta have thick skin you gotta have tough skin you can't let these people dictate to you and you also can't let the music business run you down you really have to just stick to your guns and do what's best for you and be creative and don't be afraid to like like I said take your artistry to another level but all I gotta say is um as an Emory fan shout out, shout out to you um yeah I'm still a huge Emory fan to this day so yeah guys um that's my final conclusions I hope you guys enjoy this episode of The Artist Diaries featuring Anne Marie. 
And as always, the Super Saiyan is going to sign out. So don't be afraid to like, share, comment, subscribe down below. Don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. Don't be afraid to hit that notification bell. Don't be afraid to hit the like button and all the above. And as always, stay tuned on the next episode of Get Since 92, Dragon Ball Z, Narrator Reference. Peace. Bye-bye. This Super Saiyan is out, y'all.